my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we've got another Sure Cuts A Lot tutorial and I'm gonna show you how you can create shadow layers for text. Shadow layers are fantastic. They allow you to do so much. So you can do things like knock out text using them. You can do uh, things like uh, layered cake toppers. There's lots you can do when you can create shadow text. So we've already done a look at how you can work with text in Shakuts a lot and a basic introduction to it. I always work with a 12 by 12 mat. Remember, whatever mat you're working with, it doesn't matter because you can resize everything when you bring it into design space. You can change the mat size here, but I like to work with the 12 by 12 and just zoom in and out. So to zoom, you just click the zoom tool and you can then zoom in or out. You can move things across to this side of the screen, but when it comes to exporting, you need to make sure that everything is on this mat within those grid lines. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to get my type tool. And I'm just going to type my word first of all. I'm going to do it all in capitals and I'm then going to highlight that and I'm going to change the font and we're going to change it to autumn and I'm then going to select the selection tool and I can make this bigger by either just dragging that out but that will change the proportions or if I hold my shift key down when I drag it, it will keep the proportions. And equally, I can change the size of it using my text tab. I want to move those letters just slightly closer together. So I'm gonna use the tracking in my text tab just to move them slightly and in fact I'm going to make them just a little bit further apart that Y there is just a little bit further than I want it to be so I'm just going to come up to object ungroup and then I'm just going to use my arrow key on my keyboard just to move that slightly and then I'm going to draw around them and I'm just going to go to path and union, which is a bit like weld. I'm now gonna get a, another font. So this time I'm going to do I Love Glitter. I'm just gonna search in I and choose I Love Glitter. And I'm also gonna get my library up so that I can use some of the glyphs in I Love Glitter. So I'm just gonna go to fonts and I'm gonna search under I make sure that both the same fonts are selected and I can then click anywhere on that mat and of course because I increased the size it's going to give me the same size so I'm just going to reduce that down I can scroll through I'm going to use that I'm just going to click that flashing line to be able to type and I can then add that and click that flashing line again and then type and add that and click it again and type and then add that final glyph. If I look at that, they're not quite overlapping so I can change the tracking so that they are overlapped. Now I want to actually add a shadow to this so that I can do a shadow cutout in here. So all I'm gonna do is make sure that this is selected and I'm going to come up to effects and you'll see if we come down, we've got shadow layer there. So we're just gonna select shadow layer 
And we can choose the type of shadow. So you can have it as a shadow, you can have it rounded, or you can have it straight. I just keep it as shadow. And I like to change the color so that I can see it easier as well. And of course, we can change the size. And you can see, if you look at the screen, you can see how our shadow is going to look. We can also choose to have a blackout shadow. So in the middle of letters, for example, if we want that to be a solid shadow, we just click blackout and it will then create a solid color in the middle of our letters. So as I say, you can make that as big or as little as you like. And we can then select OK. We can also create several layers of shadow. So if I select that blue layer, I can again go to Effect and I can come down to Shadow Layer. And again, I can change the color. So this time let's go for a green. And I can then create that second shadow. In fact, let's go for a pink so we can see it a bit better. There we go. And if I want to create another shadow, I can. I can just select that and go to effects and shadow layer. Again, I can change the color. And I can then create that shadow as well. Great for if you want to do shadow cake toppers or anything like that. Absolutely fabulous. And if you want to remove that shadow, you just select it and delete it. So I'm going to highlight both of these by drawing around them. And I can then move them up to where I want them to be. And of course, if I hold down my shift key, I can resize them and keep that resizement exactly as I want it. Once I've got it where I want it to be, I'm going to move my actual text. So I'm only working with that shadow. And you'll see that the shadow goes behind our word. You can choose if you want to, to bring it forward. So if we go to object, we can go to arrange and we can go bring to front or send to back. So I could bring it to the front or arrange center back. I like it at the back, but it's just a personal preference. We can also, if we are not going to change the size of it, which we're not, go to object, alignment, and align centers, so that it's then perfectly centered as well. If we then draw around both of them, and we're going to slice, we're going to go to path, and we're going to choose front minus back. Now, if our shadow was at the front of our word, we would do back minus front. But we're doing front minus back this time. And that is basically slicing. If we then bring this up, we can then position it. And of course, we can change the color if we want to just by using the color palette change the color on this one. So we're going to change it to black. And that's how you can create a shadow. So I'll show you again using a different set of fonts. So let's do and this time we're going to type Oh, I don't know. Let's do use our selection tool and I'm just going to increase the size of it. I'm going to get another text. This time I'm going to decrease the size. And I'm going to choose the font first of all. So let's try, oh, I don't know, something like Mermaid Tales. And we can then write our word. And I'm going to bring my library in. So let's go with a M. And then click that so we can type. 
and we're going to use a S and leave it at that and I'm just going to make that a bit bigger so that I can see it better and of course we can scroll down and we can also zoom in if we want to just by using that zoom tool so if I look at it and I make sure I've got it selected I do need to change those a little bit so all I'm going to do is first of all play with the tracking and the tracking is not gonna add up the way I want it to so I'm gonna go to object ungroup and I can then move them so they're closer together and then once I'm happy with it I can draw around it I can come up to path and union which is very much like weld and I'm also going to change the colour on that. So let's go with a pink. So I now want to add my shadow to this one. So all I'm going to do is go to effects and shadow layer. I can change the colour. And I can then create that shadow layer and of course if I want to do a blackout shadow I can and it will make it nice and solid. I'm then going to highlight both of them and bring them up to my word and I can use my shift key to play with the size. Once I'm happy with the size and the way it looks I can move this one out the way. I can highlight both of these and I can of course go to object, align and align centers. And again, I can move this to backwards or forwards. So this time I'm going to go object, arrange and I'm going to send that to back so that my cutout is at the front. So I can then highlight both of these, go to path. So before we did front minus back, this time we're going to do back minus front because we want to slice the front out. And there we go, nice and easy to create a shadow and also to slice as well. If I don't want to move my mermaids out the way, I can use my layers panel to select it and I can then come up to path and union and it will then weld that for me. The same for the words there, if I click on it to highlight it, I can then go path and union. I now want to bring those into design space so I'm going to go file and export and I'm going to it's already wanting to save it as an SVG so I'm going to give it a name and save and it will come up with my export options design space compatible is automatically ticked but just make sure it is and then OK. I can then open up design space and go to upload upload image, browse, choose my file and open, give it a name and a tag and save, select and insert to canvas. When they come in we will need to ungroup them because they were on the same canvas but of course I used Union when I was in Shirkuts a lot so they're already welded for me so I can simply highlight them, size them and then send them to make so I can then cut them in whatever I want to cut them in. As always thank you so much for watching, I absolutely love Sha Cuts a lot, there's a fair few of these tutorials coming uh, because I just think it's a wonderful program. Please do like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and also if you've got any comments or questions please do leave them below 
and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!